Well, one significant thing was, I don't think I mentioned, when I received that leaflet about TM, um, I, was, I thought that was amazing because it's true, and I just gave up TM, even though I had no desire to be a Christian. So that's an interesting fact in wow. itself. But just because of what you read about Because that. of what I read, and, and it, it, was it was true. true. Yeah. And that was my experience, and I thought it very likely to be most of the experience of the others. I didn't know if it was the case with everybody, but I knew but it was for me, yeah. and it wasn't doing me yeah. any good. Um, but I used to, my arguments, the thing that actually clinched it in the end, at the end of the three months, was really because I kept praying, Jesus, if you are real, uh, make it clear to me. And like everybody else, I wanted him to appear to me and speak to me, but he didn't. Um, but I, because I was so desperate and crying out for the truth and wanting to know what the truth was, I was saying, Jesus, if you are real, please, would you sort this out? Would you sort that out? And I was having so many answers to prayer, even little things that seem insignificant, they were very significant to me. Whereas in my, throughout my childhood, it always be, seemed to be the thing that I dreaded happened. Right. And again, I think there's this link. Yeah. But as soon as I started to call out to Jesus, and um, again in sincerity, things were happening, and I was just eventually convinced, and the New Testament seemed logical to me. It seemed very likely mm. this man was there, mm. um, and I decided to trust that he was who he said he was. Right. And that, <coughs> as you've already said, changed your life. Yeah. People saw a difference in you. Yeah. Um, but because he came within and, and, and he changed you from the inside out. Yeah. Really. Andy, was it because, okay, so you became a Christian. What, what age was that? 18. 18. Oh, two years ago. Great. <laughs> um, okay, now I, you, you were 18. And um, you then, was it because of TM and yoga and things that you've been involved with before that you began to get interesting to check out? the alternative therapies, or did something else happen in your life to, uh, to do that? Uh, as a Christian, to yes. check it out as a Christian. Yes, to, to check out, as, <clears throat> as we are today, to yeah. so find the, the true because, facts. Yeah, because in my teens I was getting into yoga and TM, and um, they, they meant a great deal to me. I, did, I didn't just casually try them. I was attempting to get something positive out from them. Um, because I was in that climate and I met people who were within that sort of arena, when I became a Christian, I always had a desire and a burning to um, share the Lord with, with people who are in a similar situation. But at the time, as a non-Christian, I felt very alone. There didn't seem to be as many people, certainly not my age, who were intensely interested in, in right. that sort of thing and my motives for doing it. Um, but there are a lot more people that way now. And so I do feel a stirring when I, when I meet people who are involved in alternative therapies. I really love for them. I, I, th yeah. I think they, I, you know, I can understand the attraction of these things around them. And, and there's, the, there's the visual, there's every aspect of all your senses involved in all these things. And I can, mm. you know, I can understand the attraction. But I'm a, very aware of spiritual dangers in connection with them. So I think it's my burden to share um, the Lord with them that's got me involved in researching alternative mm. therapies and in a way I felt ignorant because a, a lot of these things like homeopathy and acupuncture I didn't really know anything about those before I was 18 so all these things coming onto the scene and hearing about them everywhere skyrocketing all these different right. therapies um, I felt I needed to look into them and find out what they were and what the common thread was if there was one and um, to understand why people are going into them. Are they dangerous? Should Christians do them? I knew Christians who were involved in them. Right. And so it was, it was something that I could associate myself with, I had some experience of, so that's why I looked into them really. Right. And this has been going on for quite a few years now. Yeah, it's it? just on and off throughout yeah. my, my Christian yeah. life, right. really. So it's, not, it's right. not my sort of, the only thing I do. It's sort of, um, <laughs> one of those. <laughs> You've got a few other things you do at so the yeah. same time. Yeah, great. Um, maybe we can sort of lay a, a little bit of a foundation, which will probably, whatever we get on to talk about today, I think there are a few things that we need to, 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 to lay down. Mm. First of all, are we saying that everything to do with alternative therapies is wrong and everything to do with orthodox medicine is right. I mean, what are we actually saying here? Um, we're, we're obviously not saying everything in orthodox 
orthodox medicine is right because we're very aware of all the different side effects and, and things that people can go through. And I think when, when we're actually talking about alternative therapies and emphasizing this, people mistakenly think that we think everything in orthodox, orthodox medicine is good, but mm -hmm. we don't. There are incredible risks involved. Um, with um, alternative therapies, it's difficult to know what you mean by that some, sometimes. Right. If it's something like acupuncture or homeopathy or yoga, I would say, well, homeopathy, acupuncture, I, I, immediately inside, I, I would feel, no, it, they're not a good thing for the reasons I could either share now or later. Yeah, we, we get on, yeah, we, yeah we, let's but, keep it basic. So yeah, okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so not every alternative therapy, what is an alternative therapy now? Is yeah. physiotherapy an alternative therapy? Is um, relaxation an alternative therapy? Well, it's not, it's, it's good to relax. <laughs> Uh, a massage is good. Right. Uh, how often can we find massage without the trappings of these, yeah. these yeah. Um, other sort of factors that, that we'll talk about later? Um, it's very difficult now because it's trendy to have that, uh, to be under the new age style umbrella these days. Mm. And so I think the trend, trendiness is a factor as well. So <clears> we've <throat> got to be careful um, that we don't put everything into this realm. Yeah. But at the same time, we do check these things out. As you mm. say, I mean, relaxation is not wrong. Massage is not mm. wrong. But if you add certain things to that, then they can get wrong, yeah. can't they? And, yeah. and, and so we have to be aware of, of, of what we're actually talking about. Yeah. Some people will also have heard the phrase complementary therapies. Mm. Now, is there a difference between complementary therapies and alternative therapies, or are they the same thing and different people just use different phrases for them? From the people that I've spoken to and a bit of reading I've done, um, they, it tends to be a hodgepodge, really. Sometimes they would say uh, homeopathy is an alternative. Um, but then when you look into it, it can't be an alternative for every kind of medicine. It would be absolutely ridiculous anyway. Um, so complementary medicine, alternative therapies, when people say that, I think they're generally meaning the ho homeopathy, acupuncture, Reiki, reflexology, right. uh, the whole lot, I think. I think it's just a general umbrella term. And I, I abbreviate it to ATCM <laughs> because, because it... It just simplifies like a cash it. machine. <laughs> I know, I know. But uh, a lot of practitioners would um, make a point uh, of saying that uh, they practice something that's an alternative, and some would make a point of saying it's a, it complements other forms. Yeah, I, I think that's it, isn't it? I, <clears throat> certainly one of the ways that I've found it being used is people want to say it's complementing. In other mm. words, we're not saying don't go down the orthodox mm. route but we're saying add this onto it and the two yeah. working together. Um, the alternative gives the idea that you don't go down the yeah. orthodox route uh, That's right, uh, yeah. at all. But we're talking really about the same things, maybe just how people are using them. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that, that's the difference um, with that. The other phrase that's often used is this whole idea of holistic medicine. Um, now, I don't know if you've got a definition of holistic. My understanding of holistic just means the whole, the complete. Mm, yeah. is, is, would, are you happy with that definition? Yeah, what, what I would say to that is um, the only holistic healing I'm aware of is Christianity. The only mm. holistic healers, if you would call them healers, are Christians because you have Christian GPs, Christian nurses, Christian psychotherapists. Christian counsellors, um, pastoral visitors, the whole lot, and you, and you have Christians praying for the sick with laying, ha laying on of hands, without laying on of hands. There are miracles, there, there is caring, and uh, more, than any, more important than anything else, there is salvation through faith in Christ, mm -hmm. forgiveness, repentance, conviction of sin, and all these things, which is true holistic healing. That's the most important part of holistic healing anyway is salvation of the soul and and yet many <clears throat> in the alternatives would say we are giving you holistic healing mm. um, but you are saying you feel that they're still lacking something yeah even even though they give so much time and so much space and and and, and so much more maybe uh, to people than busy GPs have time for, yeah. um, they're still missing out on something of the, of the deeper inward person, yeah. which you say only Christians can give. 